Now that we've introduced the geometric properties of the cross product, we're going to introduce the algebraic properties of the cross product. So all six of these are going to be good to know. So the first one is that the cross product is anti-commutative. Now anti-commutative is an interesting concept. Now we had introduced the right hand rule for the cross product. Anti-commutative means that if I were to reverse the order of the cross product, it is going to negate what we have. And the easiest explanation that you have for this is that if you were to create an anti-commutative, you'll notice that with my fingers in this orientation, uh, my thumb is pointing in the downward direction because you don't see it. Whereas if I were to flip those two vectors around, my thumb now points in the upward direction. If I'm simply reversing the direction of the resultant vector, then that's like multiplying by negative one. So that's what we mean when we say anti-commutative. Second one is that the cross product distributes over vector addition. So it is a form of multiplication, and multiplication is supposed to distribute over addition, and we find out that it in fact does. So if I have two vectors being added together, like v plus w, then it will be true that this will be equal to u cross v plus u cross w. Now something important to point out here is that the cross product has the sum of the two vectors on the right and it has the original u on the left. And in both of these, u is on the left and the two vectors that were added are on the right. So that also means that if I were to reverse this a little bit and say u plus v cross w, the distributive property is going to work the same way. w should be on the right side of both the u and the v. So this would be u cross w plus v cross w. We also refer to this as being left distributive and right distributive anytime the commutative property is not necessarily intact. So the cross product is associative with scalar multiplication. Now again, this one is going to be fairly straightforward due to the fact that if I were to multiply one of these two vectors by a scalar, then that would simply multiply one of the rows of the determinant by that scalar as well. So if I do a scalar multiplication times the cross product of two vectors, I could do the scalar multiplication first, and I could do it to either of the given vectors. So that is our um, associative property when it comes to scalar multiplication. Now, the result is going to be a vector in all three cases, so no worries there. Next up, if I take the cross product of any vector with the zero vector, and it does not matter the order in which you do it, you are going to get the zero vector. Additionally, and this is kind of an interesting property, if I take the cross product of a vector with itself, I am going to wind up getting the zero vector. Now, this is not just for itself, but if we combine this with the associative property, if we take the cross product of any two parallel or anti-parallel vectors, we are going to wind up with the zero vector. And finally, we'll be introducing this one in a future video, but if I have a dot product with a cross product, I am allowed to change the order in which I'm doing the cross product and the dot product with no penalty. That is to say, retain the order, UVW, UVW, do a cross product here, then a dot product here, or a cross product here, then a dot product here. This one is referred to as the triple scalar product, or simply the triple product for short. 
We'll be introducing the significance of that in a future video.